So hello everyone, this is Ananya Bish and I'm currently a second year student at IIT Kanpur pursuing B.Tech in Civil Engineering. Today we have with us Kushadra Bhushan and he's from IIT Dhanbad from Mathematics and Computing Department. We're going to talk about his experience and his brand so far. So over to him and let's begin. So Kushadra, could you just introduce yourself a bit? Uh, hi everyone, my name is Kushadra Bhushan. I'm currently a third year uh, student at IIT Dhanbad and I'm pursuing my Integrated Master of Technology in Mathematics and Computing. Okay, so Kushag, my first question to you is, like, what made you choose this branch? And like, what are the common myths that people have about this branch? Uh, so basically, uh, this branch, uh, I chose this branch because uh, I always had an interest in computer science and mathematics. So uh, okay. computer science, obviously, because uh, everybody wants to go to a CSE right, right, branch, right. whoever's... Uh, right uh aiming for an iit and i always had an interest in math so that's like uh why my pri priority for this branch is up there and a few common myths about this branch would be i guess that it's a master's degree more than anything so that's uh, one thing everybody around when i tell my uh family you know uh, that right, i'm right. pursuing an integrated m tech they're like oh master's right so right that's right. one thing mm -hmm. So, uh, like, what does this branch mathematics and computing mean? Like, what is the relation between maths and computing? Like, what is the overlap? Can you explain a bit that you have found, like, throughout your course? Right. So, I'd say there's quite a lot of overlap between mathematics and computing. Uh, uh, so, basically, all almost all of all our courses from math, MNC, and right. CSE, they're quite overlapping. Right, and uh, the overlap comes because uh, most of the algorithms that we're implementing right. in CSE, right, they have a strong mathematical backing behind them. So uh, what we do in MNC is understand that mathematical backing in quite a bit of depth. Uh, so right. that's where we differ right. from CSE. Right. Yeah, in a theoretical way, right? That's where we differ from our CSE counterpart. So, like, can we, like, say, like, it's a good alternative for computer science branch, like, people who aren't able to get computer science branch, like, can it be seen as a I'd, good alternative? I'd say, personally, I'd say it's the best alternative for CSE. Right. If you're not getting CSE, rather than going through an EC or an electrical branch, which, uh, to be honest, would have would put much more academic pressure on you. Right, right. Uh, coming to an MNC and a mathematics computing branch is a, is a very good alternative. Right. So IT is offered differing degrees in mathematics and computing. So like such as BS, BTEC and like you're uh, pursuing integrated masters. So what do you think is the major differences between these branches? So uh, so uh, what I think is uh, the major difference is that a BTEC and BS in uh, mathematics and computing would be a four-year course and integrated so, master course would be a five-year course, right? That's a basic difference. Yeah. And our, other than that, other than that, uh, syllabus-wise and academically, I don't think uh, that there is much difference between these uh, branches. The, uh, I mean, uh, between MTech and BS and BTech uh, courses, the only difference is that we stay for another year, another year and we right. do a thesis at the end of our last year and get a master's degree. Right, right, right. right. So, so like, yeah, moving on that. to more academic oriented questions. So like, what were your major courses and electives that you, that you studied, that you have studied? Uh, so, so uh, for us, we've studied uh, modern algebra. We've, we studied, uh, so uh, basically in our mathematically, uh, mathematical backing courses, we always have three courses that are uh, in our semester that cover three branches of math. So one is algebra. So in that we have studied modern algebra, we've studied linear algebra and right. uh, stuff like that. And then we come to the abstract math part, which is uh, discrete mathematics and real analysis and all that stuff. And then we have a statistics and probability. Uh, we have a statistic and probability course every semester. And uh, that, that would have included a probability and statistics, statistical right. inference stuff like that. And then we have two other courses for uh, computers. Uh, so uh, we had DSA, that's data structure and algorithms and object oriented programming. So all these courses are what I've studied till now. Right. 
and like all are all the like csc courses also covered in your branch or like matlab do you have like <laughs> overlapping courses with the csc branch yeah yes uh, so like i said before uh, majority of our courses are overlapping in the sense that we study what the csc guys study uh, okay. and the csc guys study what we study but like in varying uh, varying level okay. yeah. the purpose so, is different uh, right. the purpose we is different exactly. that, right. so right. what uh, what i've seen is that uh, like we did dsa so we had a data section algorithm course which was one course data section and right. algorithms right. Hmm. the csc guys had two courses that was data structures and data algorithms the, the right. two different, different courses, courses. Right. for them right so they had they studied that in a lot more depth and for us discrete math was much more in depth compared to our csc the csc guys okay. they studied discrete math in less depth than we did so almost all our courses till now have been overlap overlapping apart from a few which we will cover okay. later on in our course so like do you also have the same faculty like for these courses or like different professors take no. the course Uh, yes uh, different professors take the course so uh, the courses that we study uh, and uh, they they are offered by the mnc department so the all the courses that we study and are offered by the mnc department are taught by mnc professors and the uh, csc guys study from the csc professors there are a few courses that interchange so the ds course that we study uh, was a cs course so computer science course so a cs professor taught right. that to us and the discrete math course that they took was a uh, mnc offered course so our professor taught them so there is a, a good interplay between the, the two yeah, branches yeah sure got it so like moving on and talking about internships and placement a little bit like uh, could you share your internship experience like have you done any internship so far and i have but i should mention that that this was not an on campus internship sure, both sure. my internships were off campus right because our internships come in the fourth year, fourth year. So because like it's we, a five year course yeah, i think because it's a five year course right. right so we we uh, we are we lag one year behind the students right, right. hmm. so so uh, i'll sit for my uh, on campus internships next, uh, next year, year. Okay. Uh, next year right so uh, both my internships were off campus why i got uh, one of them was from Uh, a senior, a senior referred right. me to it, and okay. the other so was one. So basically, it was in a was startup. LinkedIn. Like it was. Ah uh, yes, like one was in a thing. yes. Both both were were in a startup. Okay. One was from ah uh, one was from ah uh, like my senior had worked in that startup before, so right. he referred so me he to it. So he recommended kind of right. He recommended me right, and the second one was uh, through LinkedIn, so okay. I got that through. So, like, could you explain a uh, little more in detail about the skill sets that were required, or like your day-to-day -day experience, and what were you required to do in that internship? <clears throat> right. So, uh, my so my profile basically is a is of a data scientist. So, right. so I do machine learning, deep learning. Uh, so uh, both of my internships were purely based on my resume and my projects. So uh, I had I had spent my first two years of college uh, building up my skill set and doing projects uh, and like uh, no that stuff uh, related stuff doing courses about them so i had a good uh, theoretical and technical knowledge backing me that right. is why right uh, so that and day to day of my intern was uh, so uh, like at the beginning of the week i was assigned a task to do and i was given right. a week to uh, mm -hmm. finish it and uh, basically we had uh, like uh, bi weekly meet meetups like stand ups right. uh, on wednesday and friday uh, and i had to give my updates like to, to discuss them, about the progress how far you like you've done the progress of, right in the week right and any uh, doubts or any hold ups i had i could clear that also like a lot of people have this doubt ki matlab unhe pata to hota hai ki like data science hai but they don't know like to what extent they should know this, this all this skill to get their first internship so like could you like tell something about it ki matlab which courses did you so, pursue or like to what extent basically you should have because like if you start studying in details it's a very vast area data science in any but like to what extent right. one should know to get a first internship or to land in their first internship uh so uh, particularly in data science it's a little bit uh, tough in the sense that the interviews that uh, data science uh, profiles take 
are quite in depth right. so uh, right you should know a, quite a bit of uh, theory behind you know whatever you're implementing right. in your project right. so uh, the courses i took were uh, i took quite a lot of courses by, uh, by the way uh, i mean uh, there was a deep learning specialization in on coursera okay. i finished that uh then there's a course called cs231n on stanford uh, by offered by stanford it's right. available on youtube right i finished that up uh and right basically these two majorly these two courses right were the ones uh, that helped me that get helped the, you uh, get knowledge the right. right so like moving on to placements like uh, could you tell us a little about like what are the placement scenarios for your branch at your college and like what are the top recruiting companies from your campus right so the top recruiting companies would be google microsoft uh, right. amazon uh, goldman sachs you know the uh, normal, right. the major right? companies uh, the major companies yes all of them come here and uh, the scenario for our branch is i mean all all the companies are open for our branch yeah. so there's no limitation that it's uh, right. like you know for for, for the core uh, core uh, core branches some of the some of the, right, the uh, cs companies, the companies aren't are open for them open for them right aren't so basically for, for your them, branch right? all the companies that are open for csc are open for your CSC branch csc are open for us as well okay. and the placement uh, is i mean it's decent it's good right so like what are the major roles that are offered uh, uh, the major roles that are offered like the uh, major like the uh, largest uh, you know profile that's offered is obviously sd that's software development software engineer, development right? right software yeah, right and other um, other profiles also do come here that's like uh, stuff like business analyst and machine learning engineer and you know other profiles also do come and we do get uh, like interns over right. there as well right so like the most seeked after question uh, is like what was the average salary so like do you have any idea about like the average yeah. median package that was offered in your college so, in this branch uh, in our college in our branch right? in our branch i think last year the median package was 25 lakhs okay uh, 25 or 26 lakhs I, exact figure i don't know but right that's right but I approximately think. it was around this yes yes 25 to 26 lakhs okay so like as you have mentioned so we can say right ki uh, mnc students have equal opportunities in the coding profile companies so like matlab it's right. not any restriction any sort of restriction over the mnc students Perfect. regarding the branch so like uh, scope can you tell a little about scope of opportunities <coughs> other than like software development and machine learning and artificial intelligence like if a person doesn't wants to sit for placement and everything like what do you have some idea about the like research if people go for research in this field right. or like pursue masters Ma- uh, i mean uh, we do get a masters degree like uh, in, right. in my branch yeah. right, we do right. we get masters uh, apart from this the opportunities are uh, i mean mnc is a branch that gives you mathematical backing right so right, there are right. a lot of fields that require mathematics in uh, in inherent like right, uh, right. one example being finance right, right? so finance uh, like stuff like quantitative analyst analyst and uh, you know all these finance fields uh, they are they seek people with a mathematical right. uh, backing so uh, that's one field that gets opened up machine learning and deep learning is also a field that right. requires people with a mathematical uh, background and for going for uh, like pursuing a higher deg- a higher uh, education uh, i i guess uh, most of the people directly go for phd's uh, right. and so phd's and mbas are also good option after this branch okay right. so like yeah that's all about internship and placement so just a little bit more uh, non academic questions so like how has your personal experience been in iit so far like is it oh, up to your expectations man. that you thought like when you entered yeah. in your first year so like everyone yes, has I mean, this idea of like how it's supposed to be and meant to be so like has it been like right. up to your expectations i mean uh when i joined college it was uh, the covid time was going on right first right. two years were online completely sure. so that was a big let down so uh, clearly no i was not expecting that but right. once i came here uh, it has lived up to every expectation i had 
so it's been it's been a lot of fun meeting so many people from different facets of life right that's Amazing. great so also one more question like uh, do you think like to what extent this cgpa matters in the resume because like on campus like in my college also like you meet a lot of different seniors and a lot of people tell you a lot of different things so like what do you think like does it matter to a good extent or like uh, if you have the right skill set so it would be like overlooked a bit what do you think what's your take on this uh, my take would be that see there's uh, for on campus placements and on campus internships it does matter right. so uh, it does matter in the sense that if you have if you have cut off uh, if you reach the cut off of the company like clear the cut off above that it does yeah it if doesn't... you clear the cut off it doesn't matter that much so sure. uh, for a few companies it's 8.5 let's say it's a 8.5 right. so if you have 8.51 and if you have 9.5 it doesn't make a difference right if you've cut cleared the cut off it's all right, right. But if you haven't, then obviously you don't get to sit for the company, and right. then you have to like that's where that it really basic cut off, right, for the company. Right, right. that right. basic basic cut off you have to reach off, reach. Okay. And for off campus, it does matter a little bit more because your CGP is a direct reflection of your academic right. uh, standing. Right. So off and campus, also like of your uh, work ethic and everything, like how seriously you take. Right, it does so. seriously exactly. So off campus, it does matter a little more. So yeah, that's that's what I think about it. yeah and like the same question for like positions of responsibility like so like to what extent do you think like they stand out in the resume to what extent they help you especially like in the profile like this like uh, your profile like data scientist i i think that it's different for different profiles so like for your profile do you think like it matters no i don't think that it matters for my profile uh, right. i mean the thing is that uh, for this this kind of role right uh, what you need is what you know right right so pors and stuff is obviously an added benefit a bonus right. that if you have them fine fair enough but you're not going to get a job just because you have right. pr but like if you right. have a excellent skill set and you don't have like pr so like it won't create a difference the, the, right it does no no it doesn't it does but it might be that okay it doesn't it doesn't no it doesn't okay okay so if you have an excellent skill set and you have no right. pr that does not matter really. like in this profile it won't matter right? not, not so definitely. yeah okay that's it so like ending with just one question like what do you think is the best thing about your it that you think like could make it stand out among the rest of the it's like what's the thing uh, that you love the most uh, about your it the thing i love the most about my it i guess it's it will be uh, common for all it's but it's the people right. uh, so we 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 see such a large uh, i mean large a large population of people from so many different parts of the country right. so i think i think what makes my iit special is are the students like the people and connecting with like different kind of people and getting to right. know them right? right so yeah that's it right. i think that's all for the interview